Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm glad that it just finally worked because I know I'm just here. Like the first three minutes of a live is just me trying to figure out how to invite you and you trying to request, but it worked. Oh yeah, it worked. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Great. Hello, Michelle. I am so happy to have you on today. Uh, so Michelle is going to be doing the Fulfillment Beyond the Plate workshop on January 13th. Um, at 4 p.m. Pacific time, at 7 Eastern time. And so we wanted to do an Instagram live just to kind of talk. Um, and so, yeah, Michelle, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you do? Hi, Ian. Thanks for having me. I am Michelle Holder, and I, I'm a teacher at heart. I'm a teacher at heart. I'm a former professor. I used to teach at the university level, um, specializing in issues around health as it affects um, people of color, especially um, black people in the U.S. And I left um, academia to start an organization called Food at the Center. And a lot of what we do is around mindful eating, mindful living. And so we're moving kind of expanding beyond just focusing on eating to fulfillment on the plate. So that's why I'm here. And I thought we should work together and do something. So yeah, yeah. I live in Maryland. Um, I'm, I'm Jamaican. <laughs> so it's, uh, I do a lot of Jamaican approach to mindfulness. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's awesome that you are doing what you're doing. And I think the, you know, experience and the knowledge you have from your, uh, what, the work that you've been doing with Food at the Center, as well as I know that you are like an, an, a former academic, I think it's going to be really exciting and cool. Um, Michelle has already shown me a few of the slides that she'll have for the workshop. And I'm just really excited at the for the, I'm, I mean, I'm excited for all of it, but I'm super excited for the part where she'll be like really educating us on how things are because <laughs> it's, it's wild out there, you know? Um, so I know that a uh, part of your work is uh, really uh, also uh, showing and showcasing uh, like Jamaica, what you, what I've heard you call like Jamaican mindfulness and Jamaican ideas and philosophy. Um, and in particular, uh, Michelle has this wonderful um, ebook um, where you talk a little bit about your experience and kind of like how you tried to, you know, basically find fulfillment beyond the plate. And you talk about uh, something called full of life. And I was wondering if you can tell us about that, you know, and how that works and all that. So full of life, because I was, <laughs> full of is like my way of saying fulfillment and satisfaction. And I wanted to be able to uh, use a term that allow me to speak in, you know, just exude the Jamaican-ness. So full of, instead of fulfillment or fullness or whatever, it's just full of would be right there. Um, and so, as I said, it's about fulfillment, satisfaction in life. Uh, hold on, sorry. <laughs> satisfaction okay. in, in, in life. In life. And uh, it has, it, it really comes from my own lived experiences. And also um, thinking about like, what are the different ideas that people have about Jamaica, right? Jamaica, we're looking to, um, as Bob Marley say, a lot of, all of us are looking for happiness in life, right? We, we, we want to, to have it all, I think. And um, so we go to school, right? We, we listen to our parents and our, you know, the people that love us and mentor us. And they say, go to school, work hard, work twice as hard. And you can attain, you know, happiness and success, right? Uh, and, you know, I believed in everything that my, I was a good girl. <laughs> listen to what my the adult said and you know they tell you do these things and you know follow this checklist of life go to school get a good job get married have children you know buy the house get the all these th these things that we hear about that will give us um 
happiness in life, like kind of like a roadmap. And for me, it was doing all the things and, you know, getting excited about accomplishing and achieving all these goals and that this happiness was really, you know, short lived, right? I went to college, got my PhD, got a job in academia. Before that, I got married, right? I got married twice, <laughs> second marriage. Anyway, we'll talk about it <laughs> the workshop. <laughs> but, you know, um, I, I, I got to a point where I, I felt like, is this all that life has to offer, right? Um, why am I so unhappy? Why am I so unfulfilled? And feeling like really a lot of guilt that I could even have those thoughts because there's so many people suffering and here I am, you know, living the the good life or at least what people tell me is the good the life. The good life. That, that good life, right? And um, kind of feeling alone um, and bad that I felt that way so uh so full of life comes from like that that yearning that craving for more and not knowing what what to do you know or where to go and how to ex express or even have the words to say what's going on with me why am I so unhappy you know when I should be jumping for joy <laughs> uh, so yeah, it, it was kind of like going within and in, in, you know, mindfulness and meditation talks about going into your inner, inner you and finding out what it is that you, I say, what it is that you crave the most uh, and allowing all the different emotions to come up without like denying that they exist because there were, you know, sadness and grief, you know feeling like I was betrayed, like these people told me to do these things and this is what I did, you know, and feeling ungrateful, like, but then feeling like a lot of guilt that I've, you know, felt betrayed. Um, and, you know, my mother worked three jobs to make ends meet. And that was the hardest part for me, that they, she sacrificed, my family sacrificed so much for me to attain these things to achieve and how dare I feel this way. And uh oh it, it was it was really hard. It was it was very hard. And then I um I got really depressed and sad and thankfully I have a really supportive husband who was there for me, like listen, um didn't judge me didn't say what was wrong with me. Um, and so it was kind of like a, a, a rediscovery, a self-discovery. And I couldn't, and I, you know, I, I'm the first of two sets of twins. My mom had twins. My mom and dad had twins. I'm the first of two sets of twins. And um, as the first girl, I was used to like holding it together for everyone. And that's oh, yeah. how I felt my role was. And at some point I felt like I had to remove the mask, like remove the mask and show myself in my lowest self. Like when I left that job, because it was a, it was a, a great job. People work hard to achieve an academic, an academic job and to get like to a point of tenure track position for job security. And I walked away from it. And I was like, are you crazy? Why would you walk away, walk away from that? But I knew in my heart, in my heart, like this wasn't it. And the only thing that was in my heart, honestly, Han, was that was saying to me was, follow food. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've always found um, peace, joy, and love in the garden. I love to cook. I, like I love to cook, I love to garden, and I love to eat. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so, the whole process, the whole process, gardening. Yeah, like I love the from food the, and the, eating. The, the garden to the plate. Like I love the whole process. So if you love food, this workshop is for you. I'm going to be talking about food, but yes, like, uh, 
I love to garden and it always was my place. Like I grew up around trees. I grew up in Jamaica. Um, if you've ever heard of Negril, I grew up not too far from Negril. White sand beaches, right? All of that stuff. But we, 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 you know, that's the tourist life. You know, in Jamaica, you're, you're just living. You're living, right? But I was always around trees and trees and plants ground me like I have my little plant right here right ground me um but like I started to do like plant and it was like horticultural horticultural therapy they got they call it that like garden ther therapy uh and yeah like that was kind of how I was able to come out of that kind of depression uh was to follow food to um nourish myself nurture myself um with literal food and then i started to um teach because i love to teach i love to teach um and so i like went to this the 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 library and i started teaching about like african culinary heritage and then i started to do um cooking demonstrations with my mom my mom loves to cook and I kind of get that after her, like she loves to garden and she loves to cook and we also love to eat. <laughs> so I have a lot in common with my mom. And it was, it was that, it was like starting with food. And I thought like it was, it was the food to follow the food, but it was more than the food. Like I was craving something else and I couldn't put my hand on it. And I, I eventually said, mommy, I can't do the cooking courses anymore. Like I need to follow food in a different way. Like follow what I'm craving. So I put that on hold. Um, she loved, she loved the cooking and I loved doing it with her, but it was just that I needed to find what, what, what is, what's my story. Um, my own voice. Uh, I also needed to like feed myself first. So full of life begins with feeding yourself and um, going within. So in, in Jamaica, you, we have like meditation. Um, Rasta call it iditit. You go within and you find out for yourself, your inner self and, you know, your human self and your higher self or your spiritual self. Um, what they call the I and I. So I went within to find out like what it what it was that I was craving in my life. And uh, I wanted to share stories. I wanted to teach. I wanted to um, show myself because uh, for so many years, I felt like I couldn't be myself to the world. Um, I'm more of like an introverted person. And I kind of learned to be kind of like seen and not be heard. <laughs> you will. I know that. I know that very well. Seen, seen and not be heard. I'm the good girl. Like I follow the rules for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I don't. Um, so I'm like getting in touch with my inner bad girl, right? And that's kind of how I was able to find fuller life, fuller life. Uh, in, in compasses of three, like three different anchors. The first being like uncover your true craving. So here I was thinking that it was food that I was craving, but I wanted something more in my life. I wanted to be happy. I wanted to be like fully um, vital in all areas of my life. So kind of figuring out all the areas of my life, where, where, what do I crave the most, right? What's looking for, what's, what's looking to be um, acknowledged and fed? And not just the food. Like it could be, um, for me, it was kind of like my health, you know, um, solitude. Like I didn't want to be around a lot of people. <laughs> Inner peace. Mm -hmm. uh, developing my own spirituality. And then so the, the, the second anchor is, um, it is finding your own success recipe. So, so uncover your true craving. The second one is 
to discover your own success recipe. Um, and that's like not following, you know, here I am checking off the list of what people saying is going to lead me to happiness, but never even looking within to find out really what it is that would make me happy. And discounting my own, um, my own inner knowing, you know, um, disregarding it and following other people's re recipes for success and happiness. And it's okay to kind of like have a blueprint. Someone has a blueprint that you can, you follow, but don't disregard what it is that you want. Because they say, you know, c cooking from a recipe is okay, but you have to eventually, a great cook knows how to create their own recipe, right? They know how to taste. They know how to discern what's needed and they know how to adjust. And you can similarly apply that to life. And then the third anchor is to, to um, recover your power. Your power and your own flavor for life. Flavor. What it is that makes you you, you know, and really showing yourself compassion throughout it all. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of like this idea of fuller life, but infusing like Jamaican um, ideas about fulfillment. But Marley has this song called, um, but Marley and the Whalers have this song called um, Concrete Jungle. It's after their first, the first album. And the hook goes, life, sweet life, got to be, you know, out there somewhere for me instead of this concrete jungle. And the concrete jungle that they were talking about is, um, it's, it was trench town. The trenches are the worst part of Jamaica. I shouldn't say worse, rough, rough part. <laughs> Not worse, rough part. And out of this concrete jungle, like in Kingston, I wasn't born in Kingston, I was born in the country. I'm a country gal. Country gal, barefoot gal, love me handing on it the ground and stuff like that, country gal, me. not the concrete jungle. Um, but he, he, they're, they're talking about a life that is beyond the suffering. And you don't have to be, be living in a ghetto, you know, living on concrete to be suffering, you know, to be unhappy. Um, so what's that life that you're craving, that you're looking for? And, you know, not disregarding like the social structures, the, the inequality that exists that may make it so that you feel like you're suffering all the time um, and giving yourself grace. Like so reggae music, in, in, it infuses this um, Jamaican philosophy on, of life. Like Bob Marley drew up on a lot of um, idioms or proverbs in the, in the music. And so it is, um, it's from that that I kind of draw. I love stories. I like talking a lot here. <laughs> I, I love, love it. Stories. Yeah, I love I, stories. And yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. I, ever since I met you, so for those who don't know, I met Michelle in a group coaching program we did that was for women and friends of color. And Michelle was in my pod group. And I just love listening to you. Like, I, I don't mind you sharing different stories, whether about yourself or about, you know, things that you just shared. I love it all because so much of what you just shared with um, sort of the three uh, parts of Full of Life, I feel like it's so timely. Like, I'm listening to you and hearing it. And I'm just like, I can't wait for the workshop because I can't wait to have a space to kind of really um, think about those things. Because I think for me... Um, so much of what you shared, I so deeply relate with. And I think especially with, I forgot exactly the wording that you had said of what the point was, but that second point about how it's okay to have like a blueprint, but to really try to, I think it was like make your own recipe. Mm -hmm. and that, recipe that, that is so, you know, difficult for me. I think for a lot of people, because we don't really live in a world that encourages us to do that. We don't live in a world where people teach us like oh and always you know check in with yourself and make sure that you create your own recipe or like you might start with a recipe but you know you can go and do your own thing i don't really know a lot of um 
like spaces in this world that we live in that really allows for that. And it's something that I, you know, feel like lately I've been struggling for myself. I mean, even this idea of like, so I'll give, I'll just go back a little bit is that a long, long time ago, and this is another thing I love about you, Michelle, is because you were an academic is that a long time ago, I went to college and I wanted to be an academic. Like I had this hope that, okay, I'm gonna get my bachelor's and my master's and my PhD and I'm gonna become a professor or something. But that was actually something I wanted to do when I was younger. And of course, when I was um, going through my bachelor's, I realized that that was not the path for me. And also I was going through this program when I was really young. So I got my bachelor's when I was like 19 years old. I don't like thinking about that time because I'm like, I don't know how I do that, I was so young. Um, but there was definitely like a br blueprint for me, right? Like there were mm -hmm. mentors and other scholars and, you know, other, other mm -hmm. smart young people around me. Uh, but I felt, I felt unfulfilled in that way. And so I was like, I can't continue this path because sure, I could probably get my PhD young, but what would that really mean? I don't think I would be happy. And so, you know, long story short, I'm now a yoga teacher. Uh, but even in the way of today of what it means to be a yoga teacher or to, you know, be a quote, solopreneur or whatever, there are certain blueprints and roadmaps and things that people say you quote should do that also makes me feel pretty unfulfilled as well, right? Like mm -hmm. there's in every world that you might be in, it's, it's hard to make room for yourself to really listen deeply. And that's something that I have to be wary of because I also fall into that trap of like, okay, well, I can be the good girl and I can do what you tell me to. Mm -hmm. But then if I don't feel good about it, what's the mm -hmm. point? Mm -hmm. um, and I definitely relate to that feeling of feeling ungrateful, but also I think it's denying our humanity if we let mm -hmm. ourselves continue to be unhappy and unfulfilled and not try to figure it out, right? Like, what's the point then, <laughs> right? To live a life where you're just unsatisfied the whole time. It's not, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want that for any of us. Yeah, it is. It's scary too, to actually um, go go to go against like the conventions. Um, that's especially if you don't have a community to support you in like of like minded people to to root you on, and um, because you're thinking that you're just crazy for wanting these things. You're just crazy. Something's wrong with you. No one understands you. Right. Um, you're, I'm, my family, I'm the, I'm, I'm the weird one. <laughs> I am too. Oh my gosh, believe me. I am too. I'm the weird one. And um, or they say the strange one. <laughs> and and so it's it's hard to go against convention. It's hard to say, I'm going to put aside that recipe that you gave me for success. And I'm going to try and and try out something new. You know, um, I'm going to not follow my mother's recipe. Right. And, and especially if it's your your mother, like the people in your family, right, the closest that you love and respect and honor and to go against what they told you is kind of like, you feel like you're betraying them. Right. It feels dirty. Like yeah, it, feels, it does. It just, it just feels wrong. Yeah. And then so, uh, but ultimately you're betraying your own self if you right. don't. And you know that you're betraying yourself. That's the worst part, you right. know. Uh, but it, it's not hard. It's not easy to say I'm, especially if what you truly want is not considered to be this marker of success in life. Right. Or you don't even know what the heck you want. You just have this yearning. And and even and sometimes to know what you really want means that you gotta drudge through some very painful emotions, like painful experiences. And that's uncomfortable. Right. That is seriously uncomfortable. And and for this year I'm like, I just wanna go there. I don't wanna I don't wanna have like the surface level type conversations. I want to have heart to heart conversations. Let's go there. You know, it's going to feel uncomfortable. But there's so much like beauty and like uh, the payoff through going through that is it, so much more I feel for myself. 
I feel so much stronger than I have before. I'm not carrying on this marker of like the black, strong black woman. Like I gotta live through suffering and pain and, you know, no, I want freaking joy. I want happiness. I want the goodness, all the goodness that life has to offer, however it comes in my own life. Yes, and, and you deserve uh, that, and you deserve yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, so, yeah. And and I, I am loyal to myself first and foremost than I am to anybody else. So when I created Full of Life, I created it for me. I created it for me. And I wrote a poem. Let me see if I can find my poem. I like writing. If I can find my poem, I'll read it. <laughs> How much okay. time we got? Uh, we, we can keep going on for a few more minutes, for five more minutes or so. Because uh, sort of the last thing we would do to wrap up is for you to share more about your workshop if you can't find your poem oh. yet. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, um, okay, it might be here. Let me see. It's a poem. I wrote a, a lot of poems. When I left, not a lot, maybe three. <laughs> <laughs> three poems. And one is called Freedom to Be. And it goes, I am drawn to simple things like nature, plants, flowers, colors, being, being free. I love. Just love, absolutely love, to listen to the stories that food tells. Listening to discover pieces of me, my family, history, culture, the world around me. Giving voice, catching words, nourishing words of self-affirmation. Moment by moment, daily writing, speaking, gently releasing, spoon-filled lies. Transforming, slowly transforming. Release, I say, Releasing daily spoon-filled lies, dislodging from my body, guilt, shame, blame, releasing, I say releasing, justification of deservedness or permission to be served, permission to be, to serve me before serving the world, releasing the structures that constrains me. That's it. Wow. That really moved me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything that you shared today and that really beautiful poem. I, I had to remember like, I, I like closing my eyes when I listen to people share poems and I had to remember like, oh, I'm on a live. I got to open my eyes. <laughs> but um, can you tell us a little more about what to expect at your workshop? That's going to be again on January 13th at 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. What can people expect at the workshop? So at the workshop, um, you'll hear more about the story, Full of Life, the framework, what it entails. Uh, so we'll go through all these, the three anchors that I talked about earlier today, which is, you know, to discover your own true, your own true cravings, uh, uncover, uh, un uncover your, your craving, discover your own success recipe, and to uh, recover your power. And uh, in, in addition to that, we're going to go through some mindful eating exercises. So bring your snack, something to eat with you. Uh, so it's going to be like mindful eating, mindful living, but from a Jamaican perspective. Um, yeah, we're, we're just going to sit and, and do some, some really cool and um, I think deep inner work type thing so you know bring your journal bring your food and uh do your best to be present like fully present there and you know hopefully by the time that we get out there you have much more clarity on what your own true cravings are and to create whatever it is that you, you create your own delicious and fulfilling life or at least begin the path or continue it if you're already doing it, you know? So yeah, that's it. Thank you so much, Michelle, for being here and sharing about uh, your story and about the workshop. 
I really appreciate you. And I, again, and I've been telling you this, you know, because Michelle and I have been in communication. Like, I'm just so excited for it because it's something that I feel is so timely, definitely for me. After 2020 and 2021, it's like, I need to sit down and I need a space to just really listen deeply, to do that deep inner work with myself and really try to figure out, you know, what would a fulfilled, satisfying life look like for me now? Because it's such a weird time. Um, and so thank you again, Michelle. Um, and if you just got here, that's okay. I'm going to make sure that the replay gets uploaded. Um, so thank you all. And also, Michelle, where can people follow you? Okay, yeah. So, you know, you can follow me at uh, what, what am I like? Fulfillment <laughs> Adventures IG, or um, you can join me at um, Food at the Center 77 on IG. And um, yeah, I have a, a free download that you can find in the, in the bio and you can read, you know, in the meantime, as you get ready for the workshop. So um, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's how people can follow me for now. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you, Michelle, again. And thank you, everyone, for being here. I hope you all have a beautiful rest of your afternoon or evening, wherever you are. Bye. And also, so let them know where to find the workshop. Is it in, how would they find the workshop? Is of course. In... Yeah. So I am going to put the uh, workshop link in the replays, like, uh, description. Um, but you can find it in the link in my bio. But yeah, okay. I'm going to put, put all that in. Yeah. Alrighty. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Take Have care, y'all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.